Hi, brothers and sisters. This is Latigo Duncan. Please excuse my messy room. <laughs> I grab my blankets off my bed and I'm covering myself. It's it's a cold day. We do have a we do have a furnace, but um, I'm just trying to stay warm. <laughs> anyway, uh, brothers and sisters, it's a beautiful day, and today I just thought I would share some some spiritual messages and spiritual thoughts. Um, the thought I'd like to, I'd like to, to bring, to bring up is, um, families. Um, there's all kinds of different situations of families. There's, some families have many, many siblings, many children, and parents. Many, some families just might have one person. <laughs> Many families, you know, my, my family, I have my wife, but I also have my, um, my parents, I have my brothers and sisters, extended families, aunt, uncles, cousins, and whatnot, you know, so, but, um, what I was sharing in my other video, I was talking about the importance of the marriage covenant and how important our relationships are and should be and um, you know if you think about it the most important relationship that we should ever have and this is true to the Doctrine and Covenants is our, our spouse and the Doctrine and Covenants it says um, love thy wife with all thy heart and cleave unto her and to none else um, None else means all things, you know, our pursuits, everything in life. And really, you know, the things that we do in the kingdom um, should promote our love and happiness and building up the kingdom. But they should never take precedence over our wife or our spouse or, or whatnot. Um, as you know, as I've said in past um situations. Uh, my wife is staying at a, a care center, assisted living care center. She's highly functioning and she's, from what I understand, she's doing very well. Uh, and I, that's the reason why I spend my days and nights writing poetry and love letters because I miss her. I want to be a part of her life. I want her to have a part of me. And I want her to know that I love her with all my heart and soul. And, um, you know, to me, that's, that's the least I can do for her because of the wonderful person that she is. And, and you know, I can go on talk about my wife forever. <laughs> and, you know, I, I've written many, 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 uh, love letters to my wife. And I keep doing it because it brings joy to my life. It, it allows me to minister to my wife. And it allows me to, um, you know, the, these last eight books that I published are all, all a byproduct of my love for my wife. And I don't quite take I don't take any credit for that. I, I give my my Lord and King all the credit um, for for what I've been able to do and accomplish. Um, but anyway, um, to get back to what I was saying about families, uh, 1995, President Hinckley and and the Quorum of Twelve Apostles gave a very wonderful uh, message on the family, the proclamations of the world. And in this, docu in this document, I'd just like to share some of my favorite quote, or my favorite part. It says, families are based and maintained on, on the concept of love, respect, compassion, work, wholesome recreational activities, and repentance and forgiveness. And I like that, you know, it, and then if we break that down again, strong families are built on the foundation of love, 
respect or our, our love respect love respect hard work patience love repentance and forgiveness and it's the, I think it's the repentance and forgiveness that helps us when we when we strayed or when we have made mistakes and we own up to it you know and you know, there's nothing, there should be nothing or anything in our life that should be more important than our family. And I realize that some of the greatest joys as well as some of the greatest pains happen in the family. And it's meant to, it's meant to be that way, I guess. But at the same time, um, you know, I, I think it's it's vitally important for us to understand that, that that our families are meant to last forever. For time and all eternity. And and you know, this this moral probation that we have is short. And so if you have a qualm with anybody in your family, get on your knees, ask the Lord for forgiveness for any wrongdoing that you may have done to that person and then and then get on your feet and, and do things for them, you know. Um, appreciate your family, appreciate them if, if nothing else. You know, pre truly appreciate them, pray for them and you will see that God's blessings will will fill your days, will bless your life, and will magnify your ability to abound in the love and glory of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, God lives. Jesus is the Christ. He is our Savior. He is our Master. His plan of happiness is real. His plan of salvation is real. The, the ability to repent and be renewed is is sometimes a joyous but sometimes a very tough process and you know I can witness to you though brothers and sisters that there can be no other greater blessing that our Heavenly Father has given us than the ability to repent the ability to change our lives the ability to turn a whole 360 or 180 or however you want to look at it, not 360 or 180 if, if needed or 360 or whatever <laughs> concerning how we're living our life before we've made our, those mistakes in our life and but to turn around and to to um, put our energies, our trust in the Lord and um, you know, to be honest, with, to, to let you know, the word repentance means to turn, to turn away from the ways of the world and embrace the gospel covenant, to embrace the gospel commandment, to um, to follow our prophet, to follow our leaders and sustain our leaders, to love our families, to to serve our families and really that's what our prophet President Nelson is saying more than anything else and he's saying you know in the last general conferences there's been a lot of changes and in the last ever since President Nelson's been a, a prophet there's been a lot of changes and it's it's been designed the things that he's been testifying of are are the things in the home the blessings that we receive in the home and the blessings that are available to us as we we make the Sabbath day a delight you know he gave us a promise last general conference that if we um, that if we make our family an important part of our life that that many of the problems in our lives and our relationships will bear sway and I'm a witness of that testament I'm a witness of you know I'm a witness that what President Nelson talked about is true you know 
you know, I think one of the things that Satan tries to do more than anything else is he tries to ha have us be nit nit nitpickers, you know, seeing, seeing faults in, in our family when we should be magnifying their strengths rather than their weaknesses. And I, I, I I'll be honest with you, I've been guilty of that myself many a time. And, and I'm learning through the trials that I go through that that's really a fruitless effort. <laughs> It's a really fruitless effort, and it's a tool of the adversary to, to, to do such things. You know, our everybody in our our family is important to the Lord. Everybody in our family is a child of God. Everybody in our family is deserving of our respect, and you know, and the family is meant to be eternal. And our family is meant to be eternal. Our relationships, everything we do in the church abounds totally and completely in the, the blessing of the family, the, 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 the covenant. The covenant the covenants that we've made in the temple to be sealed to our families to and many of us has been what's what you call born under the covenant. And what that means is if you know, my parents were were still in the temple before they had me, or my brother, or my other brothers and sisters, my other brothers and sisters, and um, so there's a there's a special protection that comes with being born under the covenant. Many people that come to the church later in life have the opportunity to go to the temple and be sealed to their children and sealed to their spouses. Many people that are new members and and um, never had the opportunity to give their or, or not just had not may not have had the opportunity, but it just worked out that they that their brothers and sisters or their parents were not able to come to church just yet. We get to do what's called redeeming the dead, and it's it's not that we go up and dig graves and. And raise the dead and baptize them. <laughs> you know, that'd be a little bit gross, but what we do is we um, we have the opportunity to uh, to go to the temple and stand in what's called proxy for those family members to bat to to get to allow them to be baptized, allow them to receive the Holy Ghost, allow them to receive the saving ordinances. After they, you know, and I'll back up to, to give a bit better clarification. Um, when we die, say I have a glove on my hand, okay? When we die, that glove, our bodies, stays here on, on earth. But our soul goes to God. It goes to what's called the spirit world. Our spirits go to God, or it goes to the spirit world, where... We are receiving further, either further, um, further progression, or we're waiting on judgment, or we're waiting on, we're waiting. Well, really, I'll tell you what. From what I understand, the spirit world is much like our life that we're living now. And there's two parts of the spirit world. There's spirit paradise. And spirit pipe paradise is reserved for those that have received their covenants and the ornaments of the gospel, that have lived righteous lives, that are not entangled in the bondage of sin, and um, have triumphantly and or triumphantly made it back to their heavenly Father. Um, and the spirit world. It, the spirit, there's another part of the spirit world, there's paradise and spirit prison. And it's not actually a, a, a place where there's bars and walls and segregation and keeping people from going. It's, it's a place where people, whether they be in sin or, or whether they have addictions or whether they have other problems in their life that, that require further treatment, require for further repentance, require further um, ability to 
transform their lives so that they can go into paradise or spirit paradise and and so that they can be receive eternal life when they are judged. You know, one one of my favorite quotes in the Book of Mormon says, you know, it says he or she that endures faithfully to the end shall shall receive eternal life. And the people in the spirit world that that have their their ordinance work done for them, such as baptism, comfort confirmation, baptism confirmation or ordinances, the first ordinances of the gospel, you know, once once they've been taught by the, the missionaries in the spirit world, and this, this is re referring to people that have passed on, and they receive those same ordinances, they're, they're free. They're, they're able to continue to progress. They're able to continue to, to grow, you know, in this earth life, you know, we have missionary work as well, and I'll save that for another topic. But just to give a little bit, a little bit of a of a clue of what I'm trying to say is that you know we we believe that once a person's been baptized, once they've exercised faith in Christ and repented of their sins on and received baptism, that person is washed clean of, of all their sins and it's a beautiful ordinance and it allows them to start their to bury their you know, the baptism is so symbolic of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as they bury their old life, their old sinful life, or their old life, and they they come out of the water, they're as clean. They're as clean as a baby. And these ordinances are done by the authority and the power of the priesthood. Um, the either the, the Aaronic or Melchizedek priesthood. And these covenants are saving, these ordinances are saving ordinances. And they are, they are sacred, they are eternal, they are, they're everlasting, and they allow those that receive them to progress. They allow those that receive them to receive eternal life. They allow those that receive them to be healed of their firm, to, to be healed, to, to take upon them a covenant with God that, they'll, that they will remember Him always and, and keep His commandments. Brothers and sisters, I, I testify to you that this gospel is true. I testify to you that this gospel is a merciful gospel and it requires service, it requires the best the best out of all of us, but the thing is, as we covenant with the Lord, He keeps His covenant with us. As we covenant with the Lord at the waters of baptism, as we take upon us the name of Jesus Christ, and promise to serve him and remember him always and keep his commandments. Um, we are blessed. We are blessed with 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 um, a renewed sense of discipleship. We're, we're blessed and become Christ's true disciples. And there are many blessings that come with 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 other ordinances and, and that we take upon ourselves such as the temple ordinance, the endowment, the sealing to the spouse, the sealing to children to their parents. You know, if, if, if you were not born under the covenant, which means your parents were still in the temple before you were born, um, you can go to the temple and, and if your parents are living, you can be sealed to them in the temple. It requires a special um, worthiness, a certain amount of worthiness to attend the temple. Um, but the blessings are eternal. And the blessings allow us to continue to progress. They allow us to continue to receive of God's mercy, His love, His truth, His, His kindness, and His, His love. And brothers and sisters, I testify to you that this gospel is true. 
I testify to you that it, it is no, it, it's not just a whim or a, um, it's not just something that, that man made up. It is, it is the work. It is the purpose of Almighty God to allow us to come to earth to receive a physical body to gain valuable earthly experience to find the gospel to receive the saving principles or ordinances of the gospel and to return back home to our Heavenly Father and I testify to you brothers and sisters that as we as we embrace this covenant as we as we search the scriptures each day as we um, give meaningful service as we lose ourselves in the, in the work of the, of the Lord there is no greater joy there's no greater happiness there's no greater peace that we can receive than to know that we are living a living a life that is pleasing to our Heavenly Father that is pleasing to the Lord and that is is being fruitful that's being um, fully fully uh, fully kept fully kept to help us to abound the love and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ brothers and sisters my name is Latigo Duck and I am the founder of the glory of Christ I want you to know that the church of Jesus Christ is true and that I am a member of the church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints my organization is the glory of Christ but I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and I testify to you brothers and sisters that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is God's kingdom on the earth I testify to you that we have a living prophet I testify to you that revelation still continues and and that our prophet does continue to receive inspiration and, and guidance and revelation from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to know how to to govern the affairs of this church I testify you two brothers and sisters that we have apostles and prophets that we have bishops, state presidents, we have Elders Quorum Presidents, Early Society Presidents, we have leaders in the church that are just just ordinary members like ourselves, but they've been called extraordinary extra, extraordinary callings that take up much time and much effort so that they can bless us and the Lord does sustain them in their callings. I've seen ordinary people become member become presidents or not presidents but bishops and state presidents and I, I testify to you brothers and sisters you know, you know that these people are magnified they, the Lord gives them the capacity the Lord gives them the ability to abound and the ability to, to fulfill their duties and Yeah, it is a very sacred and a very solemn duty to be a disciple of Christ. It's a very sacred, solemn duty to be a minister of the faith and to be a a, a savior on Mount Zion. It's a solemn duty that we owe to ourselves, that we owe to the Lord, we owe to the, to to our our family, and you know, my my intention and my my ability my ability to abound in the gospel of Christ is to love the Lord serve the Lord and to build up his kingdom and and raise my voice and to invite all to come unto Christ to receive to ha exercise faith in Christ to repent of their sins receive the missionaries receive the the, the missionaries and 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 receive that baptism that will cleanse that will cleanse you of your old life and and come out clean and spotless 
and if you do those things, and the, you know, the, the faith in Jesus Christ is the first principle, the second principle is repentance, the third principle is baptism, and then the fourth, the, the, the first ordinance, not the third principle, but the, the first ordinance is baptism, and then the, the, the next ordinance is receive the Holy Ghost. And, brothers and sisters, I know that these things are true. I, I, I have experienced it firsthand. Um, I have ex experienced baptisms. I've experienced what these things do to people, how they change their life. It has changed my life profoundly. And I'm grateful for all the experiences that I've ever had. In the church, in my family, in my life. And I'm amazed at the love that Christ offers me. I'm amazed at the love that Christ gives me and that he loves me enough to go through trials so that I can be purified, so I can be sanctified, and so that I can um, return back to the presence of my Heavenly Father. Brothers and sisters, God lives. Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of the living God. Joseph Smith was a prophet of God. I testify that the Holy Ghost and the Savior and, and God the Father are one God in purpose and three God and, and three individuals. Um, I testify that the gift of repentance. I, I have been a, a great recipient in my life. I've been able to repent of my sins many times and I'm grateful for the love of the Savior that, that helps us recognize when we've fallen short. When we have come short of the glory of God and, and made mistakes. And I, I am thankful that I can turn my life around. That I can turn my life around. That I can put my efforts in building the kingdom. And put my old life away and get rid of my old life. and and continue to grow, continue to pro progress, and continue to love and serve my wife, to love and serve my family, and love and serve those that are around me. I love my wife. I love and adore my wife. She is the most wonderful blessing in all my life, and I'm, I, I desire to, to unite myself with her to be with her, and to love her, and to bless her. And I, I testify of these things, and I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.